about 7 million people suffer from Parkinson's disease globally. Today, I will discuss about Parkinson's disease related myths and regarding its diagnosis and treatment. I am Dr. Manoj Khanal, Associate Director and Unit Head Neurology, Max Salimar Bagh, Delhi. Today, we will discuss about Parkinson's disease. What is Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a long-term neurodegenerative disorder of the central nervous system and affecting predominantly the motor system. The symptoms of Parkinson's disease can be sim simplified in the form of trap. Trap is T for tremors, R for rigidity, A for akinesia or hypokinesia or bradykinesia, P for postural instability or gait imbalance or inability to walk. So this trap is a simple acronym. Tremor is in the form of a resting tremor, unilateral on one hand and it can involve the, the other parts of the body gradually and slowly. The rigidity part, it affects initially one part of the body, then gradually the limbs, other part and also the axial skeleton gets affected. Regarding akinesia or hypokinesia or bradycardia, bradykinesia where the patient will start to have slowness of movements and his activities will become slow. And postural instability initially starts with impairment in gait and gradually it in increases in the form of inability to walk and the patient becomes bedridden. So T means tremors which occurs at rest, initially unilateral and later on it may involve both the upper limbs and the lower limbs. R for rigidity, rigidity means stiffness of limbs, initially one part of the body then involves bilaterally. A for akinesia or bradykinesia or hypokinesia which means slowness of movements of one part of the body or both parts or involving also the axial skeleton where the patient becomes very slow. And finally, postural instability means the patient starts to have imbalance of gait and has recurrent falls. He will have a tendency to fall forward or backward. The age, age of onset of Parkinson's is basically above the age of 60 years. 1% of people above the age of 60 years, 4% of people above the age of 80 years with an incidence of 18 persons per 1 lakh persons per year with a prevalence of more than 7 million people globally. Parkinson's is creating havoc and with a mortality rate of about more than 1 lakh globally. Now we'll talk about the stages of the disease. In the stage one, the patient has got an unilateral disease where one side of the body or upper limb or lower limb gets affected. In the stage 1.5 of the disease, the patient will start to have unilateral plus axial involvement. In stage 2 of the disease, he will start to have some form of postural instability, but he is able to walk unassisted. In stage 2.5, on pool test, we do a test that is known as pool test where the patient will recover the test. And this is these three, these four stages, that is stage one, stage 1.5, stage two and 2.5 falls in the mild form of PD. This is the stage where the patient should get treatment as early as possible. Then comes the next stage that is known as the moderate PD or the moderate stage, which is stage three, where the patient will now start to have difficulty in walking, but he can walk unassisted without anybody, anybody's help. Then comes the stage 4 and stage 5 which is the advanced stage of the Parkinson's disease where the disease has progressed to an extent. In stage 4, the patient can walk unassisted but he has got severe disability and in stage 5, the patient becomes wheelchair bound or he becomes bedridden, he requires palliative care. Now we'll discuss about the diagnosis of how to diagnose a patient with Parkinson's disease. Diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is done by neurologist on the basis of clinical symptomatology of the patient as I have described regarding TRAP that is tremor, rigidity, echinacea and postural instability. Along with this, the patient might have sleep disturbances, cognitive disturbances or memory impairment. The patient might have other forms of sensory phenomenon like crawling sensation in the limbs, rigidity of joints and also behavioral changes in the form of depression, apathy, anxiety and also uh, psychosis where the patient will have irritable behaviors. This all symptomatology will suggest a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease and then followed by investigations in the form of MRI scan, DAT scan, F-DOPA scan which will confirm the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. Now we'll discuss about the causes and risk factors of Parkinson's. The causes of Parkinson is unknown 
but when we talk about risk factors the most common risk factor is head injury second is pesticides when we talk about secondary parkinsons it includes your vascular risk factor like stroke it includes infective causes like viral encephalitis autoimmune encephalitis it can be because of drug induced like in the form of antipsychotic drugs or it can be because of other factors in the form of head injuries now we'll talk about primary parkinsons or parkinsons disease in which the cause is unknown genetic factors has been incorporated in this type of patients the treatment consists primarily of four types one is the most important part is we give dopaminergic drugs which in the form of levodopa mauve inhibitors or dopamine agonist second is surgical option once the patient goes into the advanced stage of the disease the second option is surgical option in the form of deep brain stimulation or brain pacemaker the third stage is when the patient goes into the advanced stage we have to do neuro rehabilitation which is in the form of physiotherapy speech therapy occupational therapy and other palliative care the fourth stage is in the stage where the stage 5 stage where the patient goes into the palliative care stage where we need to give the patient nutritional support in a bedridden patient we need to do pack tracheostomy now we'll talk about treatment of secondary parkinsons secondary parkinsons treatment is related to the disease which caused the parkinsons that is stroke if the patient has got stroke the pa- we need to treat the stroke if the patient has got infection we need to treat the infection like hiv infection if the patient has got uh, any toxins in the body we need to remove the toxins if the patient has got any drugs because of which he has got parkinson we need to withdraw the drugs now friends we'll talk about some myths about parkinsons the first myth is that it is a communicable disease no friends parkinsons is not a communicable disease it does not it does not cause uh, spread by touching or by talking with somebody it may be a genetic disease where the genes can travel from one parent to the children but it is never communicable the most important part we need to know that it is treatable it may not be curable the second question is whether it is treatable or not so it is treatable and the most important part is that if we give early treatment as i talked about the stages that means from stage 1 to stage 3 if the patient starts early treatment the patient has got survives for at least 7 to 15 years which is more than cancer or any other form of disease also friends there is a myth that parkinson's disease cannot be treated so the patient end up with ayurvedic medicines chinese medicines or unani medicines i i need to tell that parkinson's disease is absolutely treatable if it is treated early and we have to know that everything is evidence based where the patient has got dopamine deficiency within the brain and that if we can correct the patient will get treated and the patient has got a long life with that now we have discussed about the diagnosis and treatment of parkinsons we cannot ignore this disease it is a disease which is similar to diabetes hypertension and it has to be treated with the help of the doctor and also with the help of the physiotherapist will take care of the neuro rehab part also with the help of psychiatrist which will take care of the neuropsychiatric manifestations and a proper lifestyle like yoga meditation proper diet which is rich in fruits and vegetables but most important of all is to ignore the myths surrounding parkinson's disease and to take proper guidance from the doctor regarding its diagnosis and treatment do not be afraid of parkinson's disease you can lead a normal and healthy life with proper treatment from the doctor 